Here we go again, Billy Visuals, bringing up another controversial topic. Hello and welcome to Billy Visuals, where we're all about visuals. I could go on forever arguing about the both of these shoes, but I'm going to try my best to make this an informative but short review. These shoes are both designed to be running shoes, and I already know that, so you don't have to keep reminding me. The reason why I'm even using these shoes as travel shoes is because these two shoes have really good systems in them with the Alpha Balance and the Boost technology. They're really comfortable to walk in, and I know that I'm comparing both of them in terms of comfort, but the, the two of them, either shoe is already better than a lot of shoes there are on the market. So um, that being said, this shoe review is just comparing the best of the best. Both these shoes are designed to be running shoes, but with two different foam density materials. Of course, we all know what Boost is by now. You can see it literally outside of the midsole. But if you're curious about what Alpha Bounce foam looks like, you can click right here on a video of where I cut the Alpha Bounce in half and you guys can see the foam in there. As a lot of you know, I just came back from a trip to Asia. I went to Taiwan, Japan, and Hong Kong. And through this trip, I walked hundreds of miles nonstop hiking every day from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. and actually document it every single day. So if you guys want to check out my vlogs currently, I have about 10 days of my trip uploaded and I'm going to be uploading it weekly, but I'm also going to be uploading sneaker content. You can check out my vlog at Fushimi Nari here and you can check out my vlog on Mount Fuji here. I put a lot of effort into creating these dope visuals. So thank you so much for those who supported me and watched my vlog so far. And it'd be awesome if you guys check it out. Anyways, through this trip, me and Petrina actually walked a lot, like 30,000 steps every single day. So I think it's fair enough to say that I really wore these shoes to the maximum from every single day hiking and traveling. This review is for the best traveling shoe. Take it by the grain of sand in terms of that category. And I basically switch the shoes every other day to make sure that I feel the difference. Like I said before, I know the shoe is designed to be running shoes, but the foam in the shoes are just so comfortable to walk in. So before I dive deeper, here is my final and concluded thoughts on both shoes. If you're walking in Alpha Bounce, you are walking consistently. You're consistently moving around, uh, walking, running, hiking. The Alpha Bounce is for you. You're always moving and the comfort is always consistent. With Ultra Boost, you're only walking seldomly, but most of the time you're static on your feet and that's where you get your most comfort. With Alpha Bounce, when if you're static a lot, you will feel like the midsole is quite hard. But with Ultra Boost, if you're static a lot, you'll feel the comfort and the squishiness. But with Ultra Boost, after walking a long time, you'll start to feel this annoying, warm, tingly, numb feeling in your heel and the ball of your feet. Um, this has to do with the squishiness of the boost. Um, it's not made to be uh, worn for long periods of time like a lot of people do um, because they feel like the comfort is good at first, but then over time it develops into this like annoyance almost. So for me, when I was walking every single day, uh, 30,000 steps in the Ultra Boost, I felt like I want to take it off like halfway through the day. But with the Alpha Bounce, I felt like I actually wanted to keep it on because it was consistent, it was comfy, and it was... It wasn't too much squishiness, but it also gave me support. So that said, I actually like the Alpha Bounce walking every single day consistently. But on the days that I'm a little bit more static, I like the Ultra Boost. So that's my final conclusion, but now I'm going to dive deeper into the details. So if you already wanted to know my opinion on that, that's basically it. So here's the breakdown of each shoe. Let's start off with Alpha Bounce. Alpha Bounce is good for consistent movement, but the ankle collar where the booty type shoe is, it's quite tight when you first get it. I actually loosen these laces quite a lot and after a while it'll break in, but at first you might feel a little bit discomfort on how tight the ankle collar is. But over time, it actually feels really, really good after breaking it in. The insole, I took it out because the material on the insole is a bit smooth, too silky. Um, and when you put your feet in there, it actually kind of moves a bit or slips a bit. So I just took it out but it doesn't really change the comfort. If you just put no insole in there, it still feels really, really good. The shoe is very durable, and engineering mesh makes this shoe even better. I wouldn't recommend getting the normal one without the engineering mesh because it's not breathable and the shoe is actually kind of a little bit hot without it. So if you wear this without the engineering mesh, then you would basically cook your feet. But with the engineering mesh, you get a little bit more cooling, a little bit more air through your feet. So this is the breakdown of the Alpha Bounce. The only problem I didn't like about the Alpha Bounce was that if you step in mud or dirt, um, the crevices actually get the mud stuck quite a long time. 
um, and it's a little bit hard to remove, but using a simple toothbrush or something will make it better. As you can see in this shot, the Alpha Bounce and Ultra Boost is really dirty due to the wear and tear that I've done on this shoe during the trip. And this is just evidence of me testing the hell out of these shoes. Now, I know the Ultra Boost 2.0 and 3.0 are very in comfort from the 1.0, which is why I keep highlighting the fact that I'm testing the 1.0, not the 2.0, not the 3.0. So take this shoe comfort review between the Alpha Bounce and the Ultra Boost 1.0. The number one pet peeve of this Ultra Boost is the warm numbness that you get in your heel and the ball of your feet. Now, I know you guys are going to hate me for this, but I actually do feel that feeling. And it wasn't even until I took out the insole of the shoe that I felt like the shoe was actually more bearable. But for some reason, it makes your feet really, really numb after like two, three hours of walking. So it, like in the middle of the day while walking those 30,000 steps, I would actually want to take it off just to let it settle down and not be so uh, uncomfortable. But if you have the Ultra Boost 1.0 with the insole in, please share your thoughts because I personally didn't like it and it felt way better after taking it out. Now, in terms of aesthetics, the Ultra Boost is obviously the better looking shoe. It's more simplistic and even the knit pattern is really nice on the 1.0 because it's one colored knit pattern. The prime knit on the 1.0 Ultra Boost though doesn't stretch. It is really stiff and if you try stretching it, and if you try stretching it, it really doesn't budge. It's not supple like the 3.0 or 2.0 Ultra Boost. You can see it stretch, it's very stretchy. Over time, the squishiness of the Ultra Boost is very non-existent because your feet is numb to it or it's just used to it. So it's good to switch between a normal EVA out midsole sneaker and then going back to Boost because then you'll get the real difference. But if you wear it every single day, you will feel like it's just getting really numb. That being said, the Alpha Bounce, no matter how much you walk in it, you will always feel the comfort is consistent. And it won't feel like sometimes it's numb, sometimes it's not there, sometimes it's squishy like the Boost is. But with the Alpha Bounce, you will always feel like it's comfortable. Like it's not over squishy, but it's a little bit hard to explain, but you have to try it out yourself in order to tell the difference between Boost and Alpha Bounce. So when I was traveling in Asia, every day I would this debate between the two shoes. I would only wear the Ultra Boost in urban settings and settings where I know I'll be doing photo shoots with, um, just so that I can get like a dope aesthetic because the Ultra Boost is a very simplistic and good looking shoe. Don't get me wrong, the Alpha Bounce is also good looking, but in terms of hype and aesthetics, I feel like the Ultra Boost wins that way over. That being said, on days where it's chaotic and I have to walk a lot, I would rather choose the Alpha Bounce over the Ultra Boost because it's reliable, comfortable, and it doesn't look bad. So at the end of the day, I feel like not enough people are giving attention to the Alpha Bounce because of the Ultra Boost hype and Boost hype in general. While I agree that Boost is great because of the squishiness and responsiveness like no other system has, it does have its flaws. I know this might change your perspective on Ultra Boost and Alpha Bounce, but in reality, I just want to make sure that you guys get a truthful opinion on both the shoes. They're just used for two different types of walking. And I know it's not designed for walking, but they're just comfortable for walking. So like I said before, static for Ultra Boost and a lot of movement with Alpha Bounce. Anyways, this has been Billy Visuals. You guys just got visualized and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.